today we are going to study about lithography so uh, lithography is a process of using electromagnetic energy to transfer a pattern from a mass to a resist layer deposited on the surface of a, a substrate but uh, in, this is true this is for photolithography where we are using electromagnetic energy but if we are using some other form of energy for example electron beam or ion beam then it is called ion beam lithography e beam lithography and so on but here we are discussing about photolithography so uh, this step actually sets the critical dimension of the device uh, for example if it is called 28 nanometer technology so it means that the critical dimension the smallest dimension possible to be imprinted by that particular kind of lithography is 28 nanometers and then it decreased to 22 and then to 14 and then so on now it is a few nanometers so what is the meaning of photolithography in short so uh, on a substrate or on a film a photoresist is deposited i'll explain everything uh, what is photoresist and all the other things so and over it a uh, mask is kept it is also called a reticle and this reticle is it in, is in such a manner that it has this transparent and opaque regions so that when light falls on this on the substrate through this reticle then only certain area of the photoresist gets exposed and the other parts they are not exposed to the electromagnetic radiation because of which uh, the area uh, which is exposed it might become um, the polymer might actually scission of the polymer might take place so it might become softer and it, we can remove these areas so if you are able to remove these areas so only the photoresist at the opaque regions will be left so this is a positive photoresist while if and the photoresist that is exposed to light is it gets solidified it gets stronger the bonds they get stronger they get linked then uh, it will not uh, be removed by the developer and the other areas which are not exposed to light will be removed so such kind of a resist is called a negative photoresist so in, in a way then we are transferring a pattern from the mask to the photoresist and after this you can dope the areas that are the windows that are left you can deposit a layer over it as per the requirement and, and so on so here i am drawing it on a plane but actually it will be three dimensional so it will be a layer of photoresist over a, a plane of um, a reticle so uh, as uh, we've already discussed the requirement for uh, photolithography is first of all a photoresist so photoresist is nothing but a photosensitive uh, polymer which softens uh, which gets softens um, or it get hardened in in the presence of illumination uh, sometimes uh, when we are working at high temperatures the in, then instead of photoresist we use silicon dioxide for masking the substrate so such kind of a mask is called hard mask and sometimes when we are working in lower temperatures we use a photoresist and at higher temperatures we use uh, silicon dioxide now you also require a photo mask this reticle so um, reticle is optical energy is uh, directed at the reticle containing opaque and transparent regions that correspond to the desired pattern as we have already discussed the light that passes through the photomass reaches the wafer, illuminating the desired pattern on the resist. So, in a way, it is a hard copy of the design that is required to be patterned on the wafer. Usually, uh, it is made up of chromium and on a borosilicate glass so that it is transparent where there is no chromium and it is opaque where, where there is chromium. So, any um, type of pattern can be imprinted on borosilicate. And that imprint can take place either by laser, laser writing. So if uh, the chromium is deposited, the pattern of chromium is made by laser, it is called laser writing. While if E-beam is used, then it is called E-beam writing. And uh, also, we also require a light source and we also require an alignment setup because alignment is very, very important for photolithography because many masks will be used and therefore all the patterns should be aligned one on the other. So, um, lithography, photolithography can be of few kinds based upon the distance between the mask and the photoresist. So, in this case, you see, 
that you have this mask and photoresist so if they are in contact with each other if uh, the reticle is in contact with the surface of the photoresist it is called contact printing while if there is some gap it is called proximity printing while if uh, the if there is a lens between uh, the reticle and the photoresist it is called projection printing so um, here it is just the uh, this part actually just shows how um, the optical source is so um, we have a source and a lens and how the light is incident on the uh, reticle and nothing else while here uh, this part remains the same while additional lens is required so that the light can be focused at a particular point so uh, such kind of uh, lithography where mask photo mask to the reticle is in direct contact with the photoresist is called contact printing and uh, if there is small gap between the two it is called proximity printing so this small gap is like a millimeter or two um because of this contact printing a degradation of the reticle might take place there might be scratch scratches there might be dust particles which might deteriorate and the pattern transfer while uh, in case of proximity printing because there is some distance so the mask will be saved it will not be deteriorated but there are additional diffraction effects that will be taking place because you see here the light will not diffract while in this case you see that instead of passing straight the light can actually pass in any direction from here to here it might get diffracted at these edges because of which the resolution will decrease so uh, there is no magnification one is to one ratio whatever is the pattern will be transferred to the uh, photoresist and it is uh, in both of these are inexpensive while in projection printing there is a lens between um, the reticle and the photoresist so uh, the mask image so the mask image is projected um, from the mask and demagnified to a smaller image so uh, whatever is the size of the reticle it gets smaller on the surface of the uh, wafer so because the mask is not in contact with the wafer so there is no mask degradation also there will also be diffraction effects because of the distance between the light source and the uh, photoresist and the reduction in the size of uh, uh, the projected image of light will be 4 to 5 times and it has higher resolution and but this technique is very extremely expensive so the intensity profile of the three types of uh, printing can be shown here so uh, this is the mask and resist and the wafer so um, and this separation we can change so if this mask is in contact with the resist it will be contact printing and because there will be no diffraction effect so uh, the edges of uh, um, the light uh, that will strike the resist will will be a straight line and so this kind of a profile will be there while if it is at a certain distance then there will be some uh, diffraction and therefore you'll have these uh, diffract because of the diffraction it will increase um the light will actually uh, instead of going straight actually it will go at some angle and therefore you'll have this intensity profile of this manner while if uh, there's a lens in between then it will decrease so that is why you'll have a profile of this nature so whenever we are choosing a particular kind of exposure tool uh, the performance of an exposure tool is determined by three parameters so like we are here we are discussing photolithography but it might be e beam lithography it might be x ray based lithography or um, uh, ultra uh, ultraviolet and lithography also extreme ultraviolet lithography so whatever exposure tool you are using it will have three parameters which we will need to know first of all is the resolution so it is the minimum feature size that can be transferred to a resist from a semiconductor so you need a better resolution uh, lithography process then is the registration registration means repeatability in aligning one layer on another because you see that when a device is uh, being fabricated in a fab then uh, it is not made by using one mask actually you might be requiring 10 to 20 masks so all of them must align one on the other otherwise 
the device quality will not be good and it will be it might be it might get deteriorated completely as well so um, registration is a measure of how accurately patterns on successive masks can be aligned with respect to previously defined patterns on the wafer so it it should have a good registration then throughput throughput is the number of wafers that can be exposed per hour for a given mask like so it means that like in e beam lithography is very slow while photolithography is quicker so uh, photolithography is higher throughput as compared to e beam lithography now let's discuss about resolution so resolution is nothing but the ability of an imaging system to resolve two closely spaced objects and it is uh, it will be deteriorated by diffraction that is why in contact lithography we say there will be better resolution now the resolution in optical lithography we are talking here about projection lithography is given by lambda upon numerical aperture into refractive index into k1 k1 is some constant uh, lambda is the wavelength of the source n is the numerical aperture so a uh, numerical aperture is actually so if you are using a lens then the amount of light that can be incident on this lens is actually will give you the numerical aperture so if this is large it has a larger numerical aperture if it is small it is it has a smaller numerical aperture so if we are using a wavelength of around 193 nanometer then the resolution is around 53.6 nanometer so in order to increase resolution so increase resolution means decreased value of r will be there if we decrease the wavelength increase numerical aperture and increase refractive index so let's say that we are first of all talking about the refractive index uh, first of all uh, wavelength we can't go any less than 193 nanometer because then it will be absorbed by the silica glasses lenses that we are using the next option is if we increase uh, the refractive index so increasing the refractive index means we instead of using air um, or um, uh, instead of using air we are using some medium between the lens and the wafer some dielectric medium it might be water it might be some oil or something so let's say if, if water is inserted film of water is in, inserted between the lens and the wafer then and the resolution will decrease by a factor of the refractive index which is a 37 nanometer so um but this kind of lithography has some technical hurdles because it is not very easy to deal with uh, liquid uh, when uh, we are uh, doing photolithography lithography so as we have seen that um, as we have already discussed that e beam lithography is another form of lithography in which instead of electromagnetic radiation e electron beams are used and the resolution is uh, decreased to around 1 to 10 nanometers but it is very expensive and low throughput throughput uh, lithography and it is usually used in nanotechnology while um, extreme ultraviolet lithography is also there x ray lithography is also there based upon the uh, x ray has a, a lower wavelength so we expect a higher resolution now there is another factor called depth of focus which we need to understand so depth of focus just means that how much can an image shift from the image plane so that it is still under focus and we know that resolution is given by lambda upon numerical aperture while depth of focus is given by lambda upon numerical aperture squared so it is more strongly dependent upon the numerical aperture so if numerical aperture increases then resolution will decrease or it will become better uh, in other way so um, but if numerical aperture will increase then depth of focus will also decrease which is uh, not very favorable so um, if we have a situation like this where this angle is very large it will have a higher numerical aperture and if this angle is very small a lower numerical aperture so higher numerical aperture has a smaller depth of focus and a lower numerical aperture has larger depth of focus that is why variation in surface heights of a processed wafer must be less than the optical depth of focus thus for high resolution lithography the surface must be planar okay so that is why instead of playing around with numerical aperture and uh, refractive index usually short wavelength sources are preferred in optical lithography okay so now let's try to understand how uh, photolithography is done uh, first of all on a spin coater 
uh, in a spin coater there will be small hole you see uh, on the spin coater this is uh, because uh, a rotary pump uh, is attached to this and the substrate can stick to the surface of the spin coater because of this uh, vacuum created by the uh, rotary pump because of it uh, the wafer gets attached to the surface of uh, uh, the spin coater and then a drop of photoresist is dropped on the surface of the wafer which in this case is coated with SiO2 which depends that you require some uh, uh, PR to be deposited on SiO2 or on silicon or on metal film and so on. So uh, and then uh, when it, a, a drop is um, put on the surface and then it is spun with uh, a speed of around 1000 to 10,000 rpm and uh, about 0.5 to 1 micrometer thick layer of PR is deposited on it and the spinning takes place for around 30 seconds. After this it is baked for, for some time at around 90 to 120 degrees centigrade. It removes uh, the solvent and um, increases the adhesion of the photoresist to SiO2. So uh, we see that this can be of uh, uh, the photoresist can be of two types as we have discussed. So in detail, let's discuss a little bit more here. So um, if uh, you use a reticle and you have a particular pattern over it and a photoresist is deposited on the substrate and then it is illuminated with uh, ultraviolet radiation, some of part of the uh, photoresist will be exposed to light and some will be opaque. So it will not be exposed to light. So uh, if it is then if it is put in a developing solution you see that in uh, some of the photoresist is removed. So the exposed photoresist is removed in this case while uh, the unexposed is removed in this case. So if the exposed is removed it is called positive photoresist and if the unexposed is removed it is called a negative photoresist. So uh, an example of a positive photoresist is diazonophthalquinone while uh, a negative photoresist is methyl methacrylate monomers. So exposed part is soluble and in the other one exposed part is insoluble. Here scission of the polymer takes place, the breaking of the bonds takes place in the presence of light. While here in the presence of light uh, linking of the polymer uh, monomers takes place. After this it is etched and SiO2 is removed uh, and photoresist will protect SiO2 under, under it. So here also the protected part is left and SiO2 is removed by when it is dipped in an etchant which might be HF for SiO2. And then uh, you remove the photoresist uh, by putting it uh, either in a solvent or in under some plasma oxidation um, under exposed to some plasma. So some oxygen plasma. So uh, when it is exposed the photoresist is removed and this is what you are left with. So you see that uh, the pattern that is left as resembles the reticle in this case if this is the reticle uh, this is the pattern while it is uh, and the other one where we have used the negative photoresist the pattern is opposite so it is reverse of the mass so that is why it is called a negative photoresist and this is called a positive photoresist there is also something called lift off in uh, photolithography lift off is nothing but removing the uh, remnants of uh, photo, uh, photoresist after a particular process has taken place. So here again let's say that we are exposing this photoresist to some uh, UV light and, uh, and the exposed part is removed so exposed part is this in between part while this is the opaque part and then you uh, deposit a layer of uh, metal film or any film over it and when uh, this layer is deposited we have to take care that the height of this layer is less than the height of the photoresist so that it can be removed easily at a later stage and then in order to remove it uh, you have to put it in some etchant so that the bond between the photoresist and the substrate is broken and uh, that is why and then the film is deposited in a particular area of the substrate and not on the other areas which were actually um, covered by the photoresist. So this kind of lifting of the photoresist is called lift off. So this is all we had to discuss about photolithography.